Hello friends, I am Morgan Kumar from Get Into IAS. So in this video, we are moving on to the Persian and Greek invasions. So till now, we were seeing about the rise of Magadha Empire. So in the first, the Homo Erectus arrived, then the Stone Age began, and then the Homo Sapiens and the Arapan civilization began in the northwestern part of India. And eventually, the Vedas emerged after the arrival of Aryans and also the Iron Age emerged. And for the decline of Vedas, the Buddhism and Jainism also emerged as an contradict to Vedic religion. And certain kings followed Buddhism and Jainism during the Magadha Empire also. And eventually, during this period, in the 6th century BC, this Persian and Greek invasion also happened. So there were some Persian kings who invaded India and captured certain territories. Cyrus, Darius and Xerxes. So Cyrus, Darius is grandson of Cyrus. And Xerxes is one who dethroned Darius. So now we are going to see about the Cyrus. Cyrus, his rule period in the Persian Empire. Persian Empire means the present day Iran. So that was called as Persian Empire, which was exactly located in the Middle East of our world. And Cyrus, he ruled during 558 to 530 BC. He comes under Achaemenid Empire. So there was a certain empire or dynasty we used to call in India dynasty. So they were calling it as empire. So, Achaemenian Empire, he belongs to Achaemenian Empire and he was the first Persian Emperor to lead expedition to India. So, in the middle Gangetic plains, there were Magadha Emperors and also the Mauryans were overcoming. So, Chandragupta Maurya with Kautilya, he overthrown the Nandas. So, they were doing these kind of things, but they were approaching little by little. These Persian kings were approaching from the northwest. So, they captured the Gandhara region. Gandhara region was mentioned in the Vedas also and all Indian tribes to the west of in the surrender due to the bravery of Cyrus they automatically got surrender all the tribes Indian tribes small small Republican tribes so in the central part of India they were monarchy kingdom so there were kings they were ruling in an hierarchy order but certain in the northwest and as well as near to Nepal there were some Republican tribal groups they all automatically surrender because they didn't have an higher power or an army to fight these type of kings so they automatically got surrendered and so his son was Cambyses so what he did was he was just ruling his Persian Empire alone. He didn't invade any parts of India. But his grandson is a tricky guy who later invaded India for his expedition, for his ambition for territories. So then Darius ruled from 522 to 486 BC. He was the grandson of Cyrus as I said earlier. And he conquered the Indus Valley. So Indus Valley has Punjab and Sindh. So we studied about Arapan civilization which occurred around Indus Valley. There were fertile territories like Punjab. So, barley wheat was produced more and this fertile territory was the most fertile territory of the Persian Empire during the rule of Darius. So, such a fertile empire was this Punjab and Sindh province regions. And then he also sent a naval expedition to explore Indus under Skylus. So, this shows that how these rulers were ambitious on Indus. So, in the later period, the British were more ambitious on India. So, like that, this Persian ruler was ambitious on India. Now, coming to the last, Xerxes. So, he was the last Persian king to invade India. What he did is, he used the Indian infantry and cavalry to strengthen his empire. Infantry means our food soldiers or the army. Cavalry means horse regiment, one who fights with horse. So, they are called as cavalry. He used both of them to strengthen his empire. He also used them to fight in Greek. So, in Greek, what happened is, Alexander and other Greek kings, he was fighting there with them. There was some rivalry. He used our Indian soldiers to fight there and at that time, there was a defeat. So, the, that defeat demotivated Xerxes and they also lost many lives. This also led to the decline of Persian Empire. So, Alexander invaded during this time. Alexander invasion in India. So, Alexander, we will see in the next lecture about Alexander, who was a Greek king. So, Greek, when Greek invaded India or the Alexander invaded India, this Persian Empire automatically came to a decline. So, what happened from the first? Cyrus was the first king to invade India. He belongs to Achaemenian Empire. He was the first to lead a camp to India and all the tribes to the west of India surrendered because they were Republican tribes. They were not belonging to monarchy. Monarchy, as I said in the previous videos, monarchy is the hereditary of kings. They have a powerful ruler king, but Republican tribes have some separate divisions they were ruling by themselves. So, those tribes couldn't wage war against Cyrus and they automatically accepted their defeat and they surrendered. And Cambus is his son. He was little bit different from their parents as well as his son. What he did is he didn't invade India. But his son Darius, Cambus's son, Darius was Cambus's son as well as grandson of Cyrus. 
he ruled during the period 522 to 486 BC and he conquered the major province Panchab and Sindh. So that was considered as the fertile territory among the territories of Darius during his rule. And he also sent a naval expedition to explore Indus under the soldiers Kailas. Now coming to the last who dethroned Darius, he was Xerxes. What he used is, he used Indian infantry and cavalry to strengthen his empire. At the same time, he used Indian infantry to fight the Greek kings in the Greek. Automatically, due to invasion of Alexander in India, this Persian empire automatically came to a decline. And eventually, after the arrival of Greek, there was major wars in the Northwest also, which we will see here in the next lecture, particularly about Alexander. He was the first uh, Greek king during this time. So, during this time, he came and uh, there were some later Greek kings who invaded India also, which will be seen in the Mauryans during those times. So, friends, next is Alexander. So, as we know, Alexander was a great warrior. He was one of the greatest warrior in the history of the world. And he ascended the throne of Macedonia after his father's death. His father was Philip at the time of 334 BC. And then he captured many territories across the Greek Empire, including Persia. So, he invaded Persia and captured. So, the last king of Persia was Darius III. He defeated him and that battle was called Battle of Arbla. So, after this battle, the Persian Empire came to a decline and it was captured by the Greek king Alexander or the Macedonia king Alexander. So, Macedonia was the throne or the seat. So, next is his invasion to India. So, what happened Alexander is he read the writings of Herodotus. As I said in the first chapter, Herodotus was the father of history. So, what after reading that writings, he got some ambition towards India. So, he found that India has a lots of wealth in it. So, it was Iron Age during that period and there were many Iron Ores. So, he gradually attracted towards wealth and also it was a peninsula country. There was sea. But he once believed that beyond India or after India, there were only seas and there was the eastern part of the world. So, he believed that once we invade India and capture all territories, we could conquer the entire eastern part of the world. He was thinking like that and then he stepped to India. But in India, there was a biggest battle for him because there were many kingdoms there split into, split into groups because there were republican tribes. Only in the central region, there were monarchy kingdoms like the Magadha Empire and the also at that time, there was Nanda dynasty during that time when he, he invaded India. So, so, in the northwest part first, from the Middle East, he has to go to the northwest. Then only he could come to India during those times. So, in the northwest, there were many tribal groups, individual republican tribes. So, they, he has to face everyone and automatically the soldiers got tired enough during that time. And then he went to the Jalam river. So, during that time, he had some friendship with Ambi of Taxila. So, I said there were many individual kingdoms. One such individual kingdom was Ambi of Taxila. Along with that, Ambi was the ruler of Taxila. He was the ruler of Taxila and Abhisara, it was a separate kingdom and Porus was the one ruler who ruled the territories extending from Jalam to Chenab. So, these were two rivers in the northwest as we know. So, in this territory, Porus was ruling. So, once Alexander invaded India, he crossed the Indus river. He was received by Ambi of Taxila. So, Ambi, what he did is he became a friend to Alexander to escape from me. So, he... He automatically became a friend, so he didn't do anything or he didn't wage a war. Alexander didn't wage a war against Ambi. But what happened is, he sent a message through Ambi to Porus. So, Porus, what he did is, he refused to reply and what happened is, at when Alexander was trying to cross the Jalam river, that was named as River Aedaspus during that time. So, when he tried to cross the Jalam river, there was several friends during that period and he could see that in the opposite side of Jalam river, there was a huge army of Porus. Porus. So, that time, the battle of Hydaspus occurred. So, this is battle of Hydaspus. Porus with his army, he fighted against Alexander. And finally, Porus got defeated because Alexander was a powerful ruler. At the same time, his army was a greater army at that time. But seeing his, seeing Porus valor and bravery, he, Alexander reinstated his throne. So, he reinstated the Indian prince to the throne of Porus and he appreciated him for his valor. This is what happened in the battle of Hydaspus. Now, coming to the result and decline of the Alexander. So, what Alexander did is after uh, the battle of Hydaspus, he further moved to conquer the territories in the beast. So, he was uh, annexing several territories and finally, from Indus to beast, his provinces became. 
and when he tried to expand to the gangetic plains so there was nanda dynasty and the all the makada dynasty were ruling that time so after the makada dynasty it was nanda dynasty at that time and uh, when he tried tried to expand his soldiers refused because there were several battles among the tribal groups with the tribal groups they have to face many so automatically the soldiers got tired and they refused so alexander was also not interested to persuade the soldiers to fight so he, uh, he said to the soldiers we could return so on his way to return to persia or the uh, and the greek empire he died on his return at babylon in 323 bc so his death was caused due to a mystic fever so on his return also he has to face some tribal groups because uh, there were some anger towards alexander so on his retrial he has to encounter some tribal groups and after encountering all of them he died due to a mystic fever at 323 bc and this is the end of alexander now again i would like to revise what was alexander's progress so alexander was the first greek king to invade india what he did is he ascended the throne of macedonia after the death of his father philip and uh, automatically he started showing some interest towards india he defeated many persian empire also he captured persia also during that time and then he got interest towards india when he read the book of herodotus herodotus was the father of history and uh, when he read the writings of herodotus he got interested towards the wealth of india so he campaigned against india he waged a war, his soldiers to move towards india to capture all the territories of india so he could he was also ambitious on capturing the eastern boundary because he was thinking that after india it was full of sea so he could conquer the eastern part of the world entire world so when he moved there were many tribal groups during that time so he has to encounter many tribal groups so the soldiers got automatically weak alexander soldiers got automatically very weak after crossing the indus river he was received by ambi sorry ambi of taxila and there were many other kingdoms abisara and porus porus was the ruler of territories from jhelum to chenab so that time the battle was happened called battle of hydaspes because jhelum earlier name was hydaspes porus refused to surrender to alexander so there was a war across the river of hydaspes or jhelum so when he crossed alexander crossed, took several time to cross the river because it was several flood and when he crossed there was army of the porus and he need to fight and finally porus got defeated but still inspired by the valor and bravery of porus alexander reinstated him, him to the throne so eventually uh, when he captured certain territories in the bis river he further expanded to the gangetic plains but his soldiers refused due to a long fight it was many years they were fighting so due to that they got uh, tired and they refused to move towards the gangetic plains so alexander was also not interested to persuade them to move forward so they came back during that time they also had to face some tribal groups while they were returning so there were many republican tribals during that period and they had to face the return also and uh, while they returned path alexander died at babylon due to a mystic fever so this is the end of alexander in the next lecture we are going to talk about the effect of alexander and persian invasions friends now we are moving on to the effects of persian and alexander invasion so persian invasion was happening around the span of 200 years so 100 to 200 years they were invading india and during that time there were many efforts so these are the three main effects what were the effects are so there was a development of indo iranian commerce so automatically when we have an invasion in india we automatically started trading with them we developed some cultural relations with those countries and started trading with them that is the history and this the same happened here so after the invasion of iran or the persian empire the indo iran commerce started developing or the trade started developing between the two countries and also the karosthi script karosthi script is one of the iranian script so it became popular after the invasion of iranians or the persians so this karosthi script was adopted during the ashokan period so ashoka used it in the scripts in the northwestern region in its inscriptions this script apart from brahmi script which i mentioned in the reconstruct in the past chapter about the brahmi script and karosthi script also so karosthi script was taken from the iranian or the persian so this also had some effects so now coming to the art art and architecture was also there was much prevailing during the mauryan empire so there had some effects of persian empire in the art of the mauryan empire so what were the effects so this monolithic pillar architecture 
or the sculpture was taken from the Iranian. So they add certain things like this and this was taken from this and also the inscriptions in the Iranian inscriptions were like that of Ashokan inscriptions. So the inscriptions in Iranian were like that of Ashokan inscriptions also because there were certain scripts. So this form of writing inscriptions. So Ashoka was a visionary ruler. He was knowing everything. So he started recollecting what all happened. So he took certain things from the Iranian empire also like the Karosti script, Ashokan inscription. So he followed those kind of things in India also. And issue of edicts. There was, so there was many edicts for Ashoka. As I said, he was a visionary ruler. So what he did is he installed many rock edicts. He constructed many rock edicts for the future generation to know about his history or know about the decents or the Dhamma. We will talk about those things in the later Ashoka's reign. To know about those things, he installed rock edicts and inscripted in Brahmian Karoshi scripts about his valor and this administration was inscripted in those. So issue of edicts was influenced by Iran. Iran's edicts influenced the edicts of Ashokan period or the Mauryan period as well as in the other periods of the emperors. Now coming to the invasion of Alexander after the invasion of Alexander. So only after the Persian emperor, this Alexander invader after conquering the entire Persia, he thought of entering India due to his ambitions on territories. He was a great historian. So he invaded India knowing the wealth of India. So after Alexander's death, what happened is, so the, I said there were many Republican tribes who retreated against Alexander as well as Alexander had to fight all of them. So the soldiers got automatically weak. So this created a unification of India. So the after and foreign invaders. So what happened during the modern India, the British invaded. There were many dynasties and automatically after the British invasion, they united. So the same happened during the past also. After Alexander invasion, there were many tribal groups. They also got united to form a vast kingdom up to the south. That was the Mauryan kingdom, which comes next in the series. Trade began between Asia and West Asia. So the same happened to Iran also, also the Greeks. After the Persian invasion, trade exited between the India and Iran. The same happened between the India and the Greeks. So I said in the reconstructing part chapter, there were evidence of Greek coins in India. So there was evidence of Greek invasion in India also. And uh, Chandragupta's expansion made Alexander short live in India because uh, he was dominating the entire central India. Uh, he was against the Nanda with the assistance of Kautilya, his chief advisor. Kautilya is also called as Chanakya or uh, these two, they became a gang and what they did is they dethroned the Nanda ruler. De after the dethrone of Nanda ruler, his expansion expanded up to the southern part of India. So this made what Alexander shortly in India. Now coming to, so meanwhile, he also divided the provinces in the northwest. So he captured the provinces from Indus to Bees. No? So what he did is he divided those provinces into three and those three provinces were administered by certain governors. So, Sandragupta Maria defeated all of them and captured every territories and united India. The main effect of Alexander's invasion was the unification of entire India except the southern kingdoms. So, now coming to the revision part. So, the Persian Empire when they invaded, so automatically the trade started between the Indian and Iranian and also the Karoshti script was a greater influence because Ashoka adopted it in later stage. And then the rock edicts was also taken from the Persian art and architecture, the sculpture monolithic pillar of Ashoka and various other sculptures were also taken as influence from the Persian Empire. So these are the influence of Persian Empire and for Alexander, the territories become united and trade began between India and West Asia. Also the naval route was established between India and the West Asia kingdoms. So he was fighting for the seas, Alexander. So this also gave birth to naval route trade. And due to the expansion of Chandragupta Maria, this Alexander was short-lived. He couldn't expand to the Gangetic Plains. And also, uh, he was administering the provinces meanwhile with three governors. In this two bees, he divided into three provinces and he was administrating. And there was many Republican tribes who were united and automatically the Greeks empire also came to decline. So this is the end of the chapter of rise of Magadha and Greek invasion. So these all happened during the 6th century BC while the rise of Buddhism and Jainism. At that time, there were certain kingdoms who were doing this. So what happened after this unification? The Mauryan Empire was formed. We are going to discuss about Mauryan Empire in the next chapter. One of the greatest empire and also the greatest ruler Ashoka. Ashoka was considered as the greatest ruler of the world. So we are going to discuss about them in the next chapter. So thank you. 
Please subscribe to our channel.